What's up, garden and friends? How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. I was just up on Instagram reading some messages, some DMs, and somebody asked me what I thought was a really good question. And that question was, what are some recommendations for some plants that are safe for children and pets and generally easy to take care of? And I thought, hey, you know what? That would be an excellent thing to make a video about. I've gone through my plants, picked out just a few, about five plants that make good plants to have around the house that are safe for children and pets. When I say pets, I mean dogs and cats. I haven't looked into birds and like hamsters and things like that, uh, but you know, general pets, dogs, cats, and children, which aren't pets. You know what I mean. On the table here, I already have three of them lined up. The others I can't quite line up. They're a little bit big. So to start with, I'll talk about this maiden hair fern. Now really, maiden hair ferns are safe for children and dogs and cats, but I would normally recommend for an easy, easy fern to have around, something like a Boston fern. I don't have any Boston ferns, so visually, this is what I got for you. What I have for you, what's with my language? Not all ferns are safe. Some can cause like contact dermatitis and other problems, but generally the maidenhair ferns and Boston ferns, staghorn ferns and the bird's nest ferns, which I can, I think I have some of those. Back here I have a staghorn fern, which has some fallen debris in it that I need to clean out. Kind of walking and talking here, so pardon the informality of things, but staghorn ferns, also safe as well as are the bird's nest ferns. However, these are not ferns that I generally would consider to be quite as easy to keep as say like the Boston fern. And you can see here, they can be a little bit finicky. Next up is a classic house plant. This right here is Peperomia. This is Peperomia obtusifolia, a variegated Peperonia, sometimes called a miniature rubber tree, which uh, I can see the resemblance there for sure. These are another popular and easy to find plants that are pretty easy to grow. There's lots of variation in their leaf form. Some are variegated, some are not. There's different shapes. They generally don't get very large. They don't grow super, super fast. And they're pretty forgiving, which makes them always a plant that's on the top of my list when recommending something for beginners. This isn't really a care video, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on it, but I will make sure to get something quick out about the peperomias, because they're really cool plants. They're something I'd like to talk about. And next we have the parlor palm, the antebella. They stay relatively small. They only get a few feet high. They grow fairly slowly. They can take lower light than most other palms. They do have a leaf shape to them, and so do ferns as well, but they have a leaf shape to them that is very, very, very appealing to cats. They are considered to be non-toxic, but if you have a pet that goes in and overindulges, then of course that could upset their stomach, and not just a pet, a child as well. They're fun, lush, green, and easy to grow. I need to get mine potted up into something a little bit more decorative. This line's here from giving it a hefty soak. When I was out of town, it got very, very dry. It needed a little bit of help because I had divided out a clump from here when I did a planter back in, I don't know, I want to say December. I went ahead and I pulled some out to use in that planter. And the others have actually responded fairly well to having that extra space in their pot, but uh, I need to tidy it up. It's looking kind of sad and sloppy, leaning a little bit, and that's because I need to make sure to rotate it to help keep that growth even and pull it up right where it needs to be. Over time though, all of these little trunks that are in here, these will eventually grow up taller and they'll have little rings on them and they just look like fun little miniature palm trees. That does take some time though, it doesn't happen right away. Probably have to wait a few years till you start to see something like that happen. But they're very common, generally fairly affordable. Usually you, you can get them in little like four inch pots at like the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot and because of that they're cheaper but when you start to move up in larger pots they become more expensive because they are a fairly slow grower a moderate to slow grower as far as palms are concerned but they're an excellent palm to have in the house all right and next another palm i thought i should throw in something that's a little bit bigger for people who maybe want a floor plant and yet those are the eureka palms mine's actually so big that i don't think i can get the whole thing into frame for this video but uh the full name is dipsis ludicens the uh, golden butterfly palm, golden cane palm, or the butterfly palm. Lots of different names for it. It does like a very bright location. Even some direct sun will do it well. Uh, not too close to drafts because they aren't a fan of cool, cold temperatures. They have very, very, very lush foliage, as you can see up here. They grow fairly quickly too. This one, I've only, well, I guess I've had this one for about four or five years, maybe even longer than that actually, but it didn't have any rings on its trunks when I got it and it's really, taken off and been doing fairly well. I'm sorry I can't get a better shot of that. There's no, I can't get far enough away for it to get these full guys into frame. 
but these are a nice floor plant because of that larger size like i'd mentioned and the more light you give them the more of kind of a yellowy hue that they will take on on their fronds and on their trunks and lastly the chlorophytum or kind of lastly actually i thought of another one i want to talk about but the chlorophytums or these spider plants they're a really 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 easy very forgiving house plant moderate light moderate water the, one of the things that's really nice about them is they actually prefer to dry out a fair amount before being watered again it's a good plant for forgetful people or you know people who are just busy or whatever again though these do have a shape to them kind of a grassy texture that is very attractive to cats they will chew them up like crazy can make them nauseous from like overindulging but it's not Toxic. And they produce lots and lots of little babies that come out really far and hang and they're just pretty. They're just fun plants to have around. Fun and very easy plants to have around. Sorry I can't really get any closer but you know there's this whole entire pond situation that's in my way. I could maybe get into that back corner but I don't think I'd get a very good shot. So but it's a common plant easy to find relatively cheap and they're rewarding because they grow very 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 well and like i just mentioned a moment ago there is one more plant i want to talk about which i guess would make this six plants we'll call it a bonus plant and that's the schlumbagera or the thanksgiving cactus usually called a christmas cactus even though that is not what these are these are super super easy plants to keep around in the house they like to dry out because you know they are a cactus not one that you leave dry all winter long and with proper care and attention they'll bloom for you a very nice heavy heavy display of flowers in the winter time and well around thanksgiving really so not quite winter fall that does vary depending on your day lengths and when you decide to start moving them into darker locations to induce them into blooming the main thing is that they're easy they're rewarding they grow well and they're not going to make anybody sick there are a lot of plants that i could talk about but i wanted to go over the ones that are like really 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 easy like right here over here this donkey's tail the variety of this one i believe is called el burrito but it is not what i consider to be the easiest plant to grow it's not a hard plant to grow if you overwater these guys they're done and which is the case for a lot of plants but also a non-toxic plant as are the photonias but again not always the easiest plants I just want to stick with plants that are fairly universally easy to grow for most people. You know, plants that aren't as fussy and more forgiving. Like I said, the list of non-toxic plants actually is quite long. There are a lot of options out there. A quick recap, particularly I would prefer a Boston fern, but the maidenhair ferns are not toxic. Peperomia obtusifolia, and then the parlor palms, Eureka palms, spider plants, and the schlumbagera or the Thanksgiving cactus. Easy, low maintenance, and forgiving house plants. I did also want to talk about just because a plant is labeled as non-toxic safe for dogs cats and children doesn't mean that it's something that should just be laid around willy-nilly where anybody can get to it i do have a general rule with my plants which is whether it's toxic or not i keep them out of reach of anybody that may ingest the plant or disturb the plant always better to be safe than sorry and that's largely because there's always exceptions to the rules just because something is generally considered to be non-toxic doesn't mean for an individual a case-by-case -case situation that may have adverse effects on someone people have allergies to different things so it's just best to keep them out of reach put them somewhere where you don't have to worry about it here's a list of some plants for you in case maybe that's not as easy of an option you know, my cat can't jump up onto my counter she can get onto my middle counter but she can't jump high enough to get to the rest of the spaces so I don't have to worry about the toxicity with a lot of the plants as much and i don't have children running around either but not everybody it's especially cats right cats they can jump really high and uh, you can train them all you want to it doesn't matter cats are gonna do what cats want to do so again just to be safe keep them out of reach if you can what are some of your favorite non-toxic easy to grow house plants let me know comment down below you can also find me on instagram at tropical plant party i'll have the rest of my social media link down below down in the description of the video if you follow me i'll follow you back that way we can see each other's pictures it's a lot of fun just having fun nerdy plant time together oh and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up it helps a lot it helps the channel a lot means a lot to me i really do appreciate it so thank you very much and subscribe as well upload multiple times a week so don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out and don't forget to comment down below i love talking to everybody fun learning and growing together also if you can't tell I'm kind of obsessed with this peperomia. I love the leaf shape and the structure. They're just nice, fun plants. Okay, that's gonna do it. I hope everybody's doing well, doing fantastic, having a great life. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.